Hi, welcome back to Plus This. I'm Kathy Deach, and I'm here by my lonesome a little bit um, because I uh, have a co-host who is still trying to get herself better. Um, Nikki did come out for... Oh, see, that's why I have to stop things. <laughs> I was like, yes, I want to leave the page. And I was like, no, I won't leave the page. And that's why, because like, it makes noise. <laughs> so um, Nikki Bailey, my usual co-host, is recovering. She did make it to our crazy fetch uh, pop-up at the Plus Bus, where all good things happen. And um, Shai, we have a couple of pictures of that, which it, it was really, really fun. She also grabbed a gorgeous red coat from the Barbie collection that I don't know how she got it but she there are videos of her everywhere modeling it she modeled it most of the night and um and also everyone was just really really funny and of course the two ladies who were here last week Gloria and Katie O'Hearn were amazing and um we, there are videos of all kinds of stuff on at our uh, Instagram account Fatch comedy. A lot of people tagged us, and we put it in our little show icon. And um, at the Plus Bus, they were so happy because like major fat activists came out, like Reagan Chastain and um, Marilyn Wynn. And I thought Jen Wilder was gonna have a nervous breakdown because she was like so excited and moved that they were at her store and tried on her clothes, the ones she like made with her hands. So that was really incredible. And um, yeah, so um, that was just like a really great time. Thank you all who watched this and came out. It's like such a blessing to have you. Um, now listen, I'm not com I'm not a complete narcissist. I didn't like have just like a Kathy Deet show today. I do have a dear friend with me, and I'm so glad. She I just was calling her my Renaissance artist friend. Like anything I asked, you do that. She's like. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, everything, every single thing. Hey, girl, do you do, do you do baby? Yeah, do you do, do you do sewing? Oh yeah, yeah, girl, I do sewing. Girl, you you sing? Yeah, come sing with me. Uh, I mean, everything she does, it seems like. And she's here today. Kristen Pickerell is here. Yay! Hi. In the studio with me. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Um. <laughs> oh, thank you for the applause, Shy. <laughs> Shy, that was really dramatic. So, but thank you. I'm sort it. of clicking around because we had a um, technical difficulty with our printer, so I'm trying to get the run of show. But I definitely wanted to tell people about how we met again at the Plus Bus. Mm -hmm. Is where we broke it down. We did a closet sale and also had Big Girl Karaoke, which was a dream of mine. And you, like, walking in in your cute summer frock, like, with your shades. Like, you just were like, shades inside. I need shades. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, I'll sing something. And you just slayed. Like, I don't even – was it, like, an Amy Winehouse song? Like, I didn't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> I was, like, freaking out that uh, you walked in. and sh But, uh, you know, my theory. And also – Renee Kafaro, who loves you, and yes. she, hopefully she's watching. I love her. She Hi, um Renee. she said uh, Do I need these? Okay. she has a theory and I'm so with her when she was on the show that like all big girls can sing. <laughs> I you know, I'm I've never met one who hasn't. Really. I'm also learning this as well because I will watch my Instagram feed and I'll I'll you know, I've got my my friends that I follow and, and then, you know, my other um, Instagram friends that I've never met that I follow and uh, randomly I'll be like Oh, oh, she looks like she's singing. And then I'll click in real quick and she'll be like in the car, like, you know, blasting her head off. And I'm like, yes, there's another one. I love it. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. I really do want to have like a monthly live band karaoke, big girl karaoke. I'm there. You either have to be a big girl mm -hmm. and then you can sing anything. Or if you're not big and you want to come try it. You can sing a big girl song. <laughs> like it needs to be like Lizzo, Adele, uh, you um, know, Lardy Aretha. B. Yes, Aretha Franklin. Uh -huh. You need to like bring it. You you can only sing big girl songs. I'm okay with that. So I feel like that's kind of a. I think I would love to create the band that has to have that roster mm -hmm. at their fingertips. Obviously, Alabama Shakes. Oh yeah, the glorious. Um, what is, there's um, she a uh, Bang Howe. Bang Romeo. Ba um, oh, what is yeah. Um, oh shoot, 
We're gonna I find it later. Just started or you're listening. gonna tell us. you you guys tell us who she where I know who you're talking Bang about. Romeo. Yeah, that might I be think. right. Yeah. Think, yeah. But um Brittany Howard has a new album mm. out. She she did the Tiny Desk series at NPR. This oh God, she's so good. Love it. It was like a religious experience seeing her live. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like I mean, it's just like channeling. She's just like channeling. <laughs> but you channel too. I mean, that was a fun afternoon. That was a fun time. Well, you put a bunch of of fat girls who are wanting to experience a community at a place like the Plus Bus, which is all about building community, plus shopping, plus... Plus, it, we had a liquor sponsor. There was a liquor sponsor. <laughs> and then karaoke. And it's just, you know, everybody just wants to get together and meet people and have a fun time, you know? Yeah, yeah I know Lady good. Marmalade happens. There was so I def- I feel like you were pink. <laughs> I think you were pink. I was pink. Um, which I also... And- would love for you to sing an entire album of Pink. That would be amazing. <laughs> I think I did the rap too, though. Oh, you totally. Well, I did the rap. You totally did the rap. Yeah. We did not know the rap. Yeah. You knew the rap. That's a secret power of mine. That's good. Because, yeah. you know, that ra- the rap was not radio play. That was not That's in true. the radio edit. Mm-mm. So, That's like, true. you made it work. <laughs> I love it. Do you, was music always part of you? Like, was it something you came to later? Uh, no, music has been something. My mom always said that I came out of the womb singing before I talked. Um, and I was in choir and special choir and musical theater and jazz ensemble. And then when I was in high school, I was singing jazz at the college. And just, I've always been a music person. I'm going to play a whole bunch of instruments. I was a, a studio Renaissance, musician. <laughs> Renaissance person. I was you. a studio musician for a little while in Florida. Oh, um, how cool so, is that? Are you on boy it? band albums? No, no. We're talking Florida. This is no, like. No, a lot of the boy bands came out of Florida. No, they came out of South Florida. I'm from <laughs> North Florida. We're basically lower Alabama. <laughs> so it was more like. Billy Bob comes in and he has a couple songs and okay, who's going to learn oh. the the ukulele for this song and who's going to learn the accordion for this song? <laughs> so you know, it was kind of that. It was a very small studio. There was like four of us, um, but no, it was it was fun. I've I've always enjoyed uh, puzzles and sitting down and figuring out. You know, like, okay, I have to make a robotic arm. Let's get on YouTube. (laughs) I have to do that. Robotic (laughs) arm necessary in my life. (laughs) Well, and but it's like you said, like you asked me, hey, you know, can you do this? And I go, I could probably figure it out. You know, it's just I don't I don't sleep very much. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of time at night where I just sit up and like Google search how to do stuff. Um, But yeah, no. What's the thing you're making now? You're doing a lot of uh, costumes right now. I do. I do costume design for film and TV. Um, I just finished a feature up in North California, a horror film, slasher oh, horror film. It's really good. Yeah. Cool. And then um, my next one, um, I'm I'm doing uh, special effects, prosthetics, and wigs for a production of Into the Woods. Oh, stage version, and then is in the area. In the area, you know, I love Into and the it Woods. Looks so good. Um, and then uh, I'm doing um, wardrobe for a Nike commercial awesome. at the end of the month. Um, and then I have a, a special wedding that I'm doing at the end of the month on the 31st. It's a Jason themed wedding that I'm doing hair, makeup, and special effects for. Oh, that sounds like the coolest thing ever. I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you something. I and my brother, if my brother Matthew ever watches this show, which I don't think he does, I have, I'm one of five. So I have three brothers and a sister. Mm-hmm. And like my sister and my mom are like my hardcore, and then everybody else kind of dips in. Right. But Matthew Francis, my brother, if you're watching, I'm going to talk about Star Trek right now. So I have been watching Star Trek at night. Awesome. Just mainly because I have like basic, basic cable now. Right. And I it's like the thing that's not a horror show that's on like everything else is like horrible news or like weight loss things or like how to <laughs> cinch your stomach in all this, stuff, like how to torture your body. And I'm not into it. So I watched Star Trek and there was an episode with the Klingon, Klingon wedding and like and him meeting like the parent like his parents came to meet the bride and she's not Klingon so she had to do all this stuff and I was watching like this ceremony and I was like oh this is why people do this like there are people in real life who have had Klingon weddings I have seen them like 
I've it's been reported and I've been like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> but like after watching the episode, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Like, yes, like right. this is a first of all, it was a it was good television. It yeah. was a very good show. Right. And also it was kind of lovely about what um like what you sort of need to bring on in when you say you're going to be partners in partnership with someone like all that baggage and all that stuff that comes with it and mm-hmm. how some people make it and some people don't. And anyway, it was just really fascinating. And then you just told me a great story. <laughs> thing that's like so <laughs> insipid to go with that. But you know, it's, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming your way is what I'm trying to tell you. Cause it just re aired. It'd be so fun. So everyone's gonna, I I, like it. I was kind of like, I could do clean red wedding. That'd well, be and uh, right. The, the red wedding would be awesome. Um, I did a couple of months ago, I did special effects makeup for a wedding that was Midsummer Night's Dream themed. Beautiful. And it, I'm like, my day rate was ridiculous for what they were asking me to do. I was like, I only have to do one face and you're paying me how much? Mint. But um, the entire, there, there were like seven of us that were set up to do specific types of hair and makeup on the, the performers and everything. And I'm telling you, uh, we were out in uh, Pacific Palisades, um, and the venue, they had uh, grape vines brought in, and they had chandeliers hanging from them. And then they had this entire wall of TVs that was doing this, like, multimedia presentation. And then, so, uh, we had two elves in full gowns with the ears and the long blonde wigs and everything with violins walking the bride in and then they had uh, someone dressed as a satyr come through that's the goat goat dude with the little pan flute come (laughs) through and walk the groom and his party in and then they had um a a centaur come through with like these like walking hoofs and it was like the amount of production value put into this wedding and wow. I was just like this makes me believe in love and money <laughs> were, like, they, were they um themselves like in the business were they makeup no, people no they just were they just love that world so much and the wedding planner I believe is the one that actually was like you guys what if we did a midsummer do you like elves you like fairies? How about cherubim? You like you like that? Wow. I can do this for you. And it was just gorgeous. Like we would we would all like, you know, all the the workers would like do all the stuff and put all the stuff and you know, okay, you're ready. And then we would like all run to the window and be like looking. <laughs> it, it just the processional was just gorgeous. And I'm then sure. as it, you know, the sun, they're on a cliff. There's ocean, the sun is going down, the sky is like pinks and purples and blues and yellows, and there's like a centaur running around with a fairy <laughs> on its back. Like, what? It looked like it was out of a movie. It was just gorgeous. But oh. that's that. those are really fun to do. So you're doing that. Uh, and is, uh, and uh, is like October yeah. your busy time? October is really busy for like haunted houses and, and scare makeup and parties and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Do you know what you're being for Halloween? I don't get to have a Halloween. No. The wedding is literally on the 31st. Oh, okay. um, I am wearing a red, less, red lace mini dress with a high nice. neck collar. Nice. And I'll probably do blood red lips and like black sclera contact lenses and some little veins. Fun. Yeah. And go to the wedding. Yeah. It's someone you know? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's fun. Mm -hmm. That's great. I had someone who wanted to have a wedding that I knew from high school. And I don't know if she ever ended up having it. I don't think she stayed with this guy. But she wanted it to be like a costume ball. And she wanted me to be Mother Earth. And we have this whole. And I was like, oh, my God, it's amazing. And then, like, it never happened. But then, like, one Halloween, I was Mother Earth I'm anyway. Mother I was Earth like, anyway, totally it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I I tend to work on Halloween too. Like last year I got to be the hocus pocus ladies. I was Bette Midler. Oh, look at that. Yes. It's, if you got for the you guys on podcast, um Kristen's wearing a t shirt that says it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. It's one of my top five movies. I don't care what time of year it is, if that movie comes on I will stop and watch it. I love it. Yes. It was never that for me. I had to learn it from scratch. Really? I had to learn the song because we sang the song. Right. At like a bar. That was really fun. Is it the, I put a spell on you? Yeah. 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 It was. Gone, gone, gone so long. Yeah. yeah. And they did all the choreography and I was just crazy. Mm-hmm. I put a spell! 
on you. Like it was really, really fun. Mm-hmm. I lie. Yeah. There's actually, there's a tour going around of the unauthorized musical parody of Hocus Pocus. That's um, some some yeah. woman in Florida, I believe, started oh, cool. last year. And then she is doing several different tours. I submitted, but I heard nothing. It's One okay, day, I forgive you. It's, it's in there. It, you'll, it's Make on a really your list. Good, it's on um, the list for sure. You'll mm-hmm. be there for sure. You sure. also, um, I we had this really great photo of you, and I want to show it. It's uh, from the I Am Human Project. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, um, oh, well, or you could oh, show well, the Eloquy dress <laughs> because she also is a model who is in Eloquy. But, um, but. <laughs> Also, there is, uh, you have all this writing, for those who are just podcasting, um, there's this really cute belly picture that says, I am beautiful, cute, adorable, sexy as fuck. Um, <laughs> what What is the I Am Human project? So, uh, my friend who was a photographer, his name is Eric Fisher, he did this entire photo series project where he had all sorts of different people, all sorts of different gender identities and sexual orientations and skin colors and just ages and and you know male female neutral whatever um transitioning he had us all come in and we had to write down um things that people say about us so then he recorded a little video of us talking about it and then um the, the idea was, so there's, uh, I didn't send them to you, sorry, but there's um, photos of me with my stomach that say uh, lazy, fat, unworthy, right. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we did pictures of that marked out. And then we did pictures of what we say about ourselves and what we feel like our body represents. Excellent. So um, I was the only, uh, as from the pictures that I've seen, I was the only plus size person. Wow. And um, it was a very last minute thing for me. I didn't think I was going to be able to get there in time to be able to do it. And so I showed up. And uh, the interview portion, I just remember um, being so on fire about, you know, body positivity and representation and all this kind of stuff. And at the end, one of the other, um, because Eric Fisher was the photographer and then there was like a videographer. The videographer came up to me at the end and she was like, I've never heard of a fat person talk so lovingly about themselves before wow so sometimes we forget because we have our own little community bubbles yes right? we do and and you know we are fighting so hard to have this community for ourselves. sometimes we forget that the outside world doesn't know the internal struggles that are going on yeah. they don't know the, the leaps and the bounds that we're trying to make within ourselves, yeah. and to have those connections those outreaches with other people yeah to be able to have that kind of a connection with your own body and to be that person even in a situation where you are the one. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's really great that in Fatch, like, we're all like, oh, but when we get into straight size spaces, like when we go to UCB and do a show, it's like, oh, there ain't fat bitches here. There's barely women here. Right. Let alone women of color. Like, I don't even know how those girls are. By the way, you are native. I'm native. I love that. Yeah. And I was bragging. I was like, this is the third native <laughs> woman we've had. It's amazing. And I love it. There's not very many of us that I find. Um, I, I have a, a very small select number of friends on the Book of Faces that are native and that I can talk about things and claim things with. Um, f- funny enough, did I tell you about TikTok? No. So I I got on got on the TikTok. Everyone's trying to get me on the TikTok. It's the worst. Don't do it. It's I'm the worst gonna, thing that I've done to myself. But it'll take a sec. I literally just lay there in bed now and just scroll. And then I <laughs> ended up following this dude who all he does is yell into the phone, put the phone down, go to bed. Why are you still scrolling? And that's what all of his videos are. I Very useful because then I go, oh, yeah, it's four o'clock in the morning. I should go to sleep. Oh, my God. But um. On TikTok, there is this whole community of natives, and it there we have our own hashtags, we have our own videos. There's like this whole like trending thing um, where they. So, uh, have you seen the picture of the the natives with the red hand print over yes. their mouth, mm-hmm. signifying that they're silencing us, and mm-hmm. there's a blood vendetta and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, 
uh, there's a whole sub sub thread of TikTok videos where natives are doing that, and there's a song that goes along with oh, it. Oh wow! Uh, very very powerful for me because I you know, but um, I th- there's like th- there's at least twenty of them uh, that I follow now. I, I just feel like it's but it's, it's so weird. Like representation matters. Yeah, it really does. You and know? you know, it it's so funny because it's not something. I think about until I have like a Jana or an Amy or you sitting here. We just reposted them for um, National Indigenous um, Visibility Day. Is that word in there too? I I mean, we call it something different. I'm sure. I don't know if I can say that word (laughs) on air though. Say it if you want. Yes. Fuck Columbus Day. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So we just we had just reposted our other two guests and like some like listening to some of those experiences and like having your mind blow. I mean, Jana had me in tears at one point. Like, I, you just if you are white, you don't get it, so many things, and um, that intersectionality is so important. And I'm sure mm-hmm. you know that uh, I, that being represented and seeing that representation is like crazy important to you yeah for sure all right we're gonna take a quick little break and we come back we're gonna serve some tea we'll see you in a minute on plus this hey promotional consideration provided by scrubs body an all female owned business giving you permission to pamper in jars and bottles now with a brick and mortar location at 245 Main Street in Farmingdale, New York. Still available online at scrubsbody.com. After show, after show, hopefully we have 10 people, 10 people giving $5 the Patreon. If 10 people give $5 a month, we could do a whole season without giving money, getting money for people we don't trust. Isn't that nice? Guys, I'm literally trying to pimp myself to dating apps to try to get us money. Ooh. I'm scared. Don't make me do that. Ooh. Just give us five dollars. Guys, internet is slow. I was trying to look at your comments. Hold on, I want to turn it off so it's not like going banana. Oh, in my ear. Um Ooh, the tea. Yes, someone wants it. Yes. Oh, uh so much Beth tea. Ditto. Yes, she's one of love them. Beth Ditto. Yes, we love her too. Yes. Fix the spelling of my name. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, Shy. My mom is screaming through the comments. My last name is D-E-I-T-C-H. Yes. So next time we say, there you go. Well, there it looks right. Oh, on the double one, it's wrong. Okay. Shy's going to work on that, Mom. Relax. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to make you choke on your thing. Um, she gets so mad for me. Like, mad for me, though. Like, I'm not even like, I'm like, whatever. We, I grew up with my name spelt wrong. They spelt my name Keith, Kathy Keith. On something. K E I T H. That somebody was just playing a prank on you. They just like were that's drunk. not even and lazy. It was the only award I've ever won. It was for a it was a um for acting. I won an award. <laughs> acting. So silly. Yes. That's not true. I actually have been given another award, but it was stored from a friend. But um <laughs> that one was like the an LA paper. I forget the name of it right now, but it, yeah, I won an award for doing silence. It doesn't matter. But anyway, I was so, so excited and then that it was Kathy Keith and I cried laughing so hard. I was like, this is so like just ego getting checked. Just need to check that ego. <laughs> Um, Just speaking, a little karma going. <laughs> yes, exactly. Speaking of karma, um, or things that happen that make you go, what is going on? So, y'all, I need to tell you, I do every now and then check my Instagram non-friends box. You know, they keep it separate, right? Like people who aren't connected to you, they put in like a separate thing and you have to like go look at them every now and then. And I, there's a lot of stuff on there I don't really want to see, so I don't go often. Mm-hmm. But this one was, like, warning me about you. And I was like, do y'all know she's my friend? Like, could you do some research? Because maybe you need to know that it's not like you're just randomly coming on the show. Like, I know you. Mm-hmm. And um, it was very interesting because it – was not just about you, it was someone who you used to be in a relationship with. 
and they kept using the word predator and I was alarmed and alarmed enough to like be like girl you need to call me right <laughs> before you show up and you know I don't know how we don't have to get into the details of it. I almost feel like it's empowering people yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they are plus size women who had a problem with your ex and the way he treated them and then decided that you were you were not caring enough about their feelings and also called you a predator as well. And I just feel like if you have anything to say, I'm just going to drink my cute little cup of plus the show water. <laughs> and you can just, just say what you want to say, girl. I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let you spill it. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I agree. I don't want to, uh, for lack of a better term, feed the trolls. I think it's a perfect term. It is a really good term. Um, because of who I used to date... And we are still very good friends, so let me put that out there. Um, unrelated, we're no longer together. But because of who I used to date, there is a group of women that have decided that I deserve to be called a predator because they didn't like his actions. So what this has turned into now um, is there's a lot of attacking going on. Uh, there are a lot of false accusations happening, and um, they are trying to get their followers to um, go against me or whatever. Th this is this is the problem that I'm seeing with this whole situation. So, uh, because these women are upset and they feel vindicated and they feel like what they're doing is. A, a righteous quest to rid the community of these issues. Um, instead of taking the time to do research, like find out that we're friends, you know, <laughs> um, they just will find out that I'm going on a show or that I'm modeling for a campaign or something of that nature. And then they'll email and say, hey, you should know this about this person. Well, so they are pitting other women against women. They are trying to start a witch hunt and they're trying to alienate me. I mean, we yeah. have enough of this from the outside world. There's absolute, I've never done anything to these women. Yeah. I, I, they have accused me of all sorts of stuff that I have never done. Yeah. And I have reached out to them a it couple was, of times asking them to come and talk to it me. It was an interesting thing. Guys, this will not be hard to find if you're looking to find it. So we're just going to talk. We're going to be vague booking a little bit here. Vague and booking. But if you are wanting to know the, <laughs> the tea, if you want whatever information, I have nothing to hide. Please DM me. <laughs> You got my Facebook, my she Twitter. She likes her DMs much more than I pay attention to mine. Facebook, sure. Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> like, I have no problem talking about whatever is going on. Um, but this situation specifically uh, is just an underlying issue that nobody's bringing up. Yeah, you're right. And that's the thing we were talking about. You know, um, these women have written blogs, and um, I. As I was reading the one, I just was like, oh, like they haven't they haven't come to the place where they need to uh, examine their life. They're not in the self-examination phase. And I feel mm -hmm. like all of us go through that phase and then we realize that's actually what it's about. Like I need to take responsibility for my part in something. Now, to be fair, your ex-boyfriend, now friend, was a guy who was a player and dated a lot of plus size women and didn't hide it and is really cute and really smart and started a, a magazine celebrating his love of plus size women. And that was at least the point of view I got when it first started. I was like, oh, this is like from his point of view, this magazine. And that and he met a lot of women because of that and wanted to date them. And even in these blog entries, the people are like, the whole way he was being honest with them about how he was with women. Like, it just was really funny. And, and you know, so there's, like, a part of this that I feel like it's generational. Like, yes, we all want to be free. Like, 
there are people who are like, I'm pansexual, and it really just means they just want to fuck. They, you know what I mean? It's like they, it's like they're not actually taking on they're they're not taking the time to investigate what that actually means for them, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, I get to be, you know, I'm somebody who's um, I, I'm uh, what's the other one when you just like date a million people? Um, uh, polyamorous. Polyam- I'm poly- open, open relationship. I'm polyamorous, but then they don't really like. Go th- so like a lot of guys who've been players their whole lives are now like in their 40s and are like, oh, the young kids like to call it polyamorous. And I- so I'm going to be in. And then they don't do the investigating on like, how do you behave ethically as a polyamorous person? And you get to tell people, hey, this is how I am. And this is how I wish to be in relationship. But I'm here with honesty. And from what I can tell, that's. From there, it's like it's literally like the Trump letter about here's the transcript of the call. Like they're literally like, look how horrible he is. And I was like, no, he's just telling you the truth. And you are not an acceptance of that. Like it was just weird. And and I do think that with all these labels, we also have to take the evaluation and say, OK, but what does it mean for me? Like, how do I keep my side of the street clean? Right. How do how am I clear? Am I actually able to be in an open relationship or do I as a plus size person feel like I have to accept whatever comes my way and therefore will love attention from someone who's giving it to me because I never get it well and that's a big part of what I'm I'm seeing from a bunch of these uh they've they've now all blocked me from their Instagrams which is fine um but a lot of what I was seeing when I was still active and able to watch was them saying how hurt they were and they just want to make sure that other women are okay they just want to make sure that no one else gets tricked by him i have never heard from any of them once they started attacking both of us and i have on uh, i went on video twice and i was like i'm right here ladies come talk to me yeah come talk to me let's let's None of this, like, you know, Instagram story bullshit. Like, come and talk to me. Have Let's a conversation do it. with me. None of them have ever reached out. And two of them I have been talking to for a couple of months before all the attacking started. One of them I've met in person. So, like, it's not like I'm not approachable. Right, right. But I, or not in the same circle. Right, exactly. Yeah. But and, and that's a big thing. Like, we, we were talking before about building a community and building... Uh, relationships with each other and um, you know regardless of who I date regardless of whatever his his connotations are or how he wants to be in a relationship um, I have done nothing wrong and there's absolutely no reason why I should be getting attacked there's absolutely no reason why they should be reaching out to people that I'm trying to work with and like warn them right it's really it was really (laughs) <laughs> like just that's not how you conduct yourself as a person it's not how you conduct yourself I mean, as a how, woman how do you want i mean because really what you're doing is trolling you're right and that's not that like how is that any different than gamer guys doxing people like you you messing with someone's income listen you are much more cool about it than me i had someone mess with my income once and i literally like tore off my wig and was like ready to go for throats but that's like the, you really are chill about it I, that would thing is really like, make I, me so mad i want to educate them i want them to get to that higher level of understanding where they have to go okay we knew how he was when we were talking to him we got upset and I have my own ideas about why they got upset and what the turning point was because all of a sudden Chris and I started posting more about each other on social media and claiming each other. And then all of a sudden they got upset, but that's neither here nor there. Right. Right. You know, um, but at some point in time you have to accept responsibility and you have to go, okay, this is a lesson that I've learned. And if you are truly there trying to um, help other people not get, into the same trap that you got into you have to be better about it you have to be smarter you have to be um doing things in an effort to uplift having a higher conversation the community yes that like putting women against women and telling your like having your followers go after other women i mean they're they um one of them got their account deleted and it, it happens to be that she posts a lot of nude pictures 
And okay, so first off, if you're on Instagram, you're posting nude pictures, they're going to get deleted. I don't care what size you are. Right. But especially if you're a fat person. Yeah, we have a are, we have a hot topic coming up about right? that. Yeah. If you're a fat person and you're posting nude provocative pictures, what good does it do for me to go through and report your profile? Right. I don't care what kind of personal issues that we have. I don't care. You're doing something that's trying to make a safer community for myself and my friends. Right. I would never do anything to, like, for my own personal gain and enjoyment. I would never do anything that would make the entire community take that much of a step back. Right. But that's the kind of stuff that I'm being accused of. Right. And all of their followers, instead of actually doing research and actually um, trying to figure out what the, the truth of the story is, right. they're going, oh, Hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. Oh, we have to take them down. Mm, hashtag me right, too. They're right. jumping on a bandwagon. Right. So I will say that there, and you and I t- talked about this and had like a really honest conversation. And by the way, thank you for being willing to talk about this yeah, with me. Yeah, of course. It, you know, we're live, guys. We're live. You don't know. We're live. Anything could happen. Um, I definitely felt a certain way when reached out by your ex about participating in his magazine. Mm -hmm. And what I loved without me even telling you that part was that you said he found out about the blog and was devastated and brought over all of his appliances. He flew me to New York. (laughs) Yeah. And, and set up a whole array and he was like, I love you. I'm so sorry that this has happened. I've been working on myself since before you and I even met because I I knew that there were things that I needed to get better about in myself if I want to help this community and use my platform as a white privileged cis male to try to help the people that I love and care about um, be viewed as actual people in the society. And he said, here's, here's all of my stuff. Th- these are all the conversations that we had like this yeah, is he, not he, true. He shown light on it, mm-hmm. which is literally the only way to cure the darkness, mm-hmm. which is why I know that you sit in the seat of power here because you you are like I I know all the truth, like it's no big deal. But I also love that he was like okay, yes, I have to own up to stuff that I've done. I have to run this better. I need more fat women around me to tell me things that I don't know about their experience. And like, I'm, this has been about me so far mm-hmm. and I need this to be about them. Right. And I, that's a thing. Trust me, girl. There are very <laughs> few cis, especially white men out there <laughs> who want to have that conversation. But out of this, you wanted to um, start, you are starting a, your own you know, community that has events. Right. LA Curve. Right. So um, my friend Jamie, hey girl, hey. Uh, My friend Jamie and I were talking about how, um, you know, we want to start going to more community-based events. And, um, you know, there's the TCF Style Expo in Atlanta. So fun. I'm always jealous. Right. So awesome. And then there's- Philadelphia uh, Curve Weekend, by the way. She's fabulous too. Wonderful. Love it. Um, And then Curvy Con up in New York. And um, we don't really have anything that is that sort of base in the West Coast. And so, um, like, there's little small events that happen at Plus Bus almost on the weekly, which is fantastic. Um, But what we are wanting to do is start partnering with Plus This and with Plus Bus and all of these different groups that are here on the West Coast to do little monthly meetups and things like that where we are – uh, you know, building that sense of community and having more events and then also do our own type of, um, and I, what, how did I f- tell you about it the other night? I was like, it's going to be like home ec class, but for yes. fatties, yes. you know, like we want to have, we want to have actual um, car companies come in so that we can explain to them, I'm fat. I have really wide hips. I need more car space mm-hmm. so that I can get into your vehicle. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's really like lobbying, stuff. quite honestly, right, is exactly. what it ends up being. It's like you're lobbying to all these different companies like, hey, hey, theaters. Hey, you know, the L.A. Theater Collective, mm-hmm. you guys, we love 99 Seat Theater, but if you don't make places for us to sit, we ain't going to come to your show. We can't spend money yeah. in your establishment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and so I, and I think that having that mass group of numbers being able to come into one space for like two or three days 
um, is really important, you know, yeah, and to show up. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, we have so much fashion that happens here. Um, we have skincare brands that are here. We have all sorts of culinary places that are here and things like that. And, and I, you know, I think that it's important for us to um, be able to teach our community about their own body. Because I, and I, I've just started um, a little on my Instagram, a little, you know, thread about this. But like as fat women and men, we are not taught how to date. No. We are taught to lose weight so that someone will want yeah. to date us. We, we had a whole long conversation about that. You know? And yeah. so there there needs to be things where we talk about sex positions, where we talk about sex toys, where we talk about what is okay and what is not okay for a someone that is a potential partner to say to us when we are in the beginning stages of right. courtship. Right. Like, I've got a friend who... Uh, dates these beautiful men. I mean, like sculpted bodies, tattooed up, model faces, gorgeous. But I don't like it when she tells me stories of they send her pictures of girls that are Instagram thick and say, this is the kind of body that I like because she has a body like mine. Hmm. And I'm like, why would he do that to you? Yeah. You know? And like, why are we accepting crumbs? Why, why I mean, okay? the accepting crumbs and dating thing, like literally if there is a theme that anyone takes away from the show, it really should be like the accepting crumbs has got to stop. Mm -hmm. And the fighting over crumbs has got to stop. And it and is like fighting each other over men has yeah, got to stop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, But it could be men or women. I mean, crumbs are crumbs are crumbs. Of course. Let's be honest. Like of women, course. there are women who do this to women too. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's mutually ex exclusive. Right. I think the thing that is exclusive is the way fat women deal with this mm -hmm. and like have this sense that they don't deserve more. I only get what I get. Right. You know what I mean? We have to take a break and because oh. I want you to hear Kristen sing. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to come back with really quick hot topics after this little break. Can't think of words to say. Make it better, make it all go away. If this can't be undone, and it's bad now, but the worst is yet to come. I know you wanna talk, nothing can make it clear. I know you're in the dark, nothing can fix us here. You say that I'm just gay And it's now I don't want to hear you Turn and walk away Well, here this loud and clear You learn to hate me, yeah And that's all right It's better than glorious i'm sorry she literally turned to me and was like we have to sing together we and i was like together. you need to record that song and i will gladly back your ass up because that's my jam that song i love it Thanks. i love and i love that you're like look at me i look like i've been cleaning houses or whatever horrible thing you said about yourself um i miss that headband i don't know where it went <laughs> that is an old apartment you're adorable. Thanks. You're, I love I love little you. Yeah. She's cute. It's a good tune. <laughs> and you're a great singer. And I'm sorry. I meant for us to play a game. We literally only have four minutes left, guys. So <gasps> we, let's like plow through some stuff. So one of the things, talking about lobbying, someone must have lobbied some senators about the Weight Watchers app for kids. Oh, for the babies, and, yeah. Yeah. And Senator Tammy Baldwin from... Uh, Wisconsin and Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut, they wrote and asked, it's this company, Kerbo, and says, Kerbo's use of before and after photos as well as the use of BMI and weight loss results tells children that they deserve to feel successful only if their BMI or weight drops or if they look like the child Kerbo had featured, implying that their appearance and the number on the scale is more highly valued than their health or character. 
Good and they for basically them. ask them to like, and they basically say like, for, uh, there's expert advice. The American Academy of Pediatrics said that parents should steer their children clear of dieting. That's fantastic. And so that's so great that I don't know who did that work. If anybody knows who did that work to get to them, like uh, this is to me, it was huge. And in all of this chaos that is like flying around, mm -hmm. like it was like a really big deal. And listen, if part of your LA curve wants to be like, let's get Katie Porter. She's Love a plus it. size Congresswoman. Yep. I want her on this show so bad. I'm going to try to do it before we're done for the year. Mm -hmm. Um, they're a little busy, so I guess it'll be okay if she's not. But, um, <laughs> like, to talk to her about it, that would be amazing. Yeah. Another thing that happened was that little girl. Wait a minute. Wait for it. Her name is Rhythm, guys. She's from Utah, a little town oh, wait, in she's Utah. She's nine. She's, she's nine, nine years yeah, old. Nine years and old. And there was a horrible test that had this question. The table on the right shows the weight of three fourth grade students. How much heavier is Isabel than the lightest student? It actually was girls, and th that's actually misquote. I saw that she had a picture of it. It actually said these three girls in this classroom. And she said, this is offensive. This is rude. I'm not answering this question. And turned turned the test in like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I went home it. and told her mom. I but And that I love that. Like... Um, I, know, I know we're running out of time, but I, I love that, like a, a like a baby, little baby. And she's already empowered enough to be able to s and think for herself and say, no, teacher, this is not right. I'm going to not do this question. I don't care if you dock me points because this is a bad question for us to have to answer and read. Yeah. I love it. No, I love it, too. Listen, we do an after the show video and you guys are really going to want to watch it because there are two stories. First of all, there is an Instagram. Um, there was an uh, I'm sorry. Rewind. There was an article written by the Visible Collective, uh, Jessica Richmond, that um, was about like pro like kind of finding the proof that in fact Instagram is fat phobic and does block us. So we're probably going to talk about that. Okay. And also, if you guys don't follow Studio Mucci, she's this amazing creative person and she's going through changes and we posted about it on our page. But I also am going to try to get her here too because I really want her to have all the support in the world. So maybe it's okay we didn't talk about her today. Mm -hmm. But send her love if you know who she is. She's like a unicorn, like literally in real life. A literal unicorn. And you, Kristen Pickroll... That's who you are on Instagram, the Twitter. Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. Awesome. Pinterest. Pinterest. You have a very active Pinterest page. Very active Pinterest page. And I but this is my thing. It's it's um deceptive because I use Pinterest for my hair, makeup, and wardrobe stuff. Ah. But it's the only Pinterest I have. So it gets like all these random thousands of views every week or month or whatever. I love it. And then there's like a little bit of my modeling stuff on there. It's, that gets hard, shared. it's hard to be a <laughs> renaissance woman, guys. That's the theme of the night. Um, we're going to sing somewhere. We'll let you know when that happens. And um, we'll be back here at Plus This next week. Thanks so much. Patreon!